Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're man, woman, single or couple, this is the show for you because, well, sex matters. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Céline Remy. Welcome back, everybody. This is episode number 18, and today we have a really juicy one for you. This show is titled, Your Neighbors Are Kinkier Than You Think. Oh, yes, they are. (laughs) And today, we have a very special guest. She isn't a famous star, but she impacts lots of lives. She has a job that she likes, even though it really doesn't inspire her greatness. She's a mom and an upbeat, playful, down-to-earth woman. In fact, she could be your neighbor. She decided to live her life in full expression and say yes to herself. Welcome, Desiree. Well, thank you both, Kevin and Celine, for having me today. Oh, this is going to be fun. (laughs) So the title of our episode is Your Neighbors Are Kinkier Than You Think. And the reason why we're doing an episode on this is because, you know, so many people have this idea in their minds that whatever kinky thing they're into or whatever sexual thing they're into is somehow like, oh, that's weird. I'm probably the only one who who has that weird thing. And the reality is, is no. And most people probably think my neighbors on this block are so... They're so quiet uptight. and uptight, and <laughs> and if they only knew what my life was like outside of this, you know, they 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 wouldn't even want me in this neighborhood, you know. And the reality is, is that's not true either. Everybody's got their own kink, their own crazy stuff. And so the whole point of this episode is, hey, let's talk to some regular people about what their stuff is. Mm, I can't wait. <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna be good. So as you know, if you've been listening to our show, we do not give our guests the questions ahead of time. So we have no idea what's going to happen here, and hopefully it'll be really fun. (laughs) All right. Everybody ready? I hope so. So, you know, we know that in, say, I think about the past year or so, Desiree, you have decided to say yes to a great many things, and that's kind of an experiment that you've been doing. But before we get into all the yeses that have happened, (laughs) I'm wondering if you can kind of explain to your listeners what your life, especially your sex life, was like before you decided to really say yes. Hmm. That's a great question, Kevin. Um, I would have to say that my sex life was probably considered pretty ordinary. Uh, for a really long time. And there were things in my life and in my desires that I never spoke because I was denied when I was very young certain things that I liked to do. And I felt really judged and that I was a bad girl. I was a dirty girl. And um, only naughty girls would think like those things. And so I shut a lot of that off um, for very many years. And so I did your regular You know, I think the kinkiest thing I did was maybe got called names and my bum spanked and maybe had it doggy style and that was about it. (laughs) (laughs) You you, you just said something, though, that I think is really important for the listeners, which is um, you said something along the lines of like you were told that those things were wrong or or bad in some way. Um, Mm -hmm. Do you have an example maybe of something that somebody said to you that was like... Uh, it was more a rejection of, of, of like energy. Like, I'm not going to do that to you. Or like, why would you want to do that? Or that's kind of weird. Or, um, or toys, if I wanted to play with toys. The person that I was with, I didn't know how to communicate very well at that time, but it was very personal. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just something that I felt, I started feeling shame around. Mm-hmm. And so the reason why I wanted to sort of emphasize that point is because I think a lot of listeners probably feel some shame around some of the things that they like. Mm -hmm. And so I think the important point to make is that there isn't anything shameful. As long as what you're doing is consensual among all parties, Mm -hmm. then it's fine. And so if you're listening out there and you feel like any shame whatsoever around, you know, the type of kink or whatever you like, just know that you you don't need to. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting too, because in that story she was sharing, it was really about like, you did make an effort to speak up your desire and yet your partner 
like brought up his own stuff in there and was like, no, I mean, why would you want to do that or judge you? So it's kind of sad when you're in a relationship and your partner can't seem to be able to support you in your exploration. Well, that's unfortunately true in a lot of relationships. But, you know, if that's the case, then that should be a, a clear signal to you that maybe that isn't the right <laughs> relationship for you. <laughs> that's yeah. one of the things that, that, that uh, Celine, you and I talk about a lot, mm-hmm. a lot of, which is, thank God you like the same weird stuff I like <laughs> or the same regular stuff I like, you know? Like, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So... I'm curious about what was it that inspired you to to make a change, then to start your year of yes to me? Well, I'll back up just a little bit, Celine. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have to say in about 2012, after a second uh, relationship that I had failed and it was a disaster, um, I had actually started little itty bitty yeses. Um, to me back then. And that's when I discovered um, there was a a release of a certain book that I read. And I was like, oh my gosh, there, this is real. There are people out there that are just like me. And I did a lot of research and found out that there was a whole community that I had no idea about. And that was when I first said yes to Yes to kink, like in a big way. I'm guessing this is Fifty Shades of Grey. It's okay. It's okay to say the name. <laughs> yes, it was. It was a game changer for my life. Mm-hmm. It absolutely was, and it just elevated. You guys um, speak of about being in a state of arousal. It was nonstop for a number of years, where I allowed myself to be in a uh, relationship that allowed me to really explore those deep, dark. Um, fantasies that I had with someone who was very skilled and uh it was just a blanket permission and I it was a game changer it really was okay so now we're getting into the juicy stuff Uh so just if I can just summarize what you said which Mm -hmm. is that that you had read 50 shades of gray and it sort of opened your whole perspective to parts of your sexuality that uh, were unexpressed, maybe suppressed when you were a child and really expanded what you thought was possible. Does that that sound like a good summary? Yes. Okay. So now that you have this expanded awareness and you think, wow, like there's all these possibilities. Hmm. Now tell us some of the possibilities (laughs) that you turned into realities. (laughs) (laughs) Like what happened during this time? Well, uh, during this time, I had the opportunity to to really go into a really submissive state. Uh, in my regular world, I'm pretty dominant, and uh, it, it gave me permission to just let go and give control over to another person. So by doing that, I got to do some really great things when it came to like obedience training, something that they is like, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, sir, no, sir, asking permission to do things and learning to relinquish a little bit of control and a play um, sort of environment and also getting rewarded with little kinky things. You know, I, um, got to crawl around with a leash and a collar. I got to wear little pretty gemstones in my ass. I got to be tied up in, in predicament bondage where, you know, if I moved one leg, I could pull on something else. I learned what nipple torture was. I had my pussy spanked on a number of different occasions with different things. Um, I had insertables that, I mean, I had no idea where that it was going and they found a place <laughs> for it. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, and I went, you know, I experienced a little bit of humiliation a little bit and, um, It was, uh, but it was very freeing. I got over some body image issues as well because, of course, the person that was sort of taking control of the relationship wanted to be proud of me. And so they would have, he would have a house party and I'd be standing there serving appetizers or beverages completely naked and um, had to get over that really quickly. And that went on for about two and a half years. And I would say that unleashed something in me that uh, was just the beginning. Oh, wow! this sounds good. I was like, my mouth is wide open. I'm like, this is amazing. Don't turn off this podcast yet. <laughs> so what I'm curious about, Desiree, is how did you go from reading the book to making that your reality? I mean, if there's people that are listening are like, yeah, I read the book. I've been fantasizing about it and I still don't have that. Like, give them the steps. Like, how do they make that happen? 
That's a great question too, Celine. So I knew one gentleman that I felt like I could trust that was a very strong, dominant male in my life. And I reached out to him and said, hey, I want to experience this thing. Will you do this for me? And he's like, you know, I've got a girlfriend right now. It's really bad timing, but I have this girlfriend who's in a triad in a, in a different kind of relationship. She might be able to send you in the right direction. So I spoke with her and she led me to two particular websites. So it's just like a dating website, but it's for really kinky people. And so that is where I had had a couple of experiences. And then I met this one that I had a real time relationship with for about two and a half years. Uh Uh-huh. That's really cool. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what I love about that, though, is that um, you spoke up and asked for what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that's the big takeaway for listeners. If if you've read the book, you haven't read the book, maybe you've just fantasized, you have this idea in your head that your sex life isn't the way you would like it to be, and there's something else that you would like to create, then speak up, Mm -hmm. ask for what you want, Mm -hmm. create the situations that you want to be in. Mm -hmm. That's extremely empowering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then that was kind of the back up. So if we do a full circle back to my question. So now it's been two and a half years. You've been doing all these different experiences and now you're kind of ready for this kind of year of yes to me. So like what was the catalyst to make you choose to do that then? Well, I had had another awesome experience with a gentleman where I got to experience what polyamory was. And I'd never been to any, um, other than BDSM parties, I'd never been to any open sex parties before. And so that was uh, another awakening of like, wow, this is amazing. People are doing this and being able to explore, experiment with different people. I learned about consent. I learned about saying yes and saying no, learned more about asking for what I wanted. And um, when that relationship came to a close, I was really like, all right, this is my year and I'm going to do whatever I want with whomever wants to do it with me, whatever that is. So if anything just pops into my mind, I'll go, oh yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Now I just got to find out who the right person is to do that with. And I usually am very successful. (laughs) Oh, really? Give us an example of the success that you've had. Okay. Well, um, recently I had a really incredible success with, um, I wanted to be the inside, the icing of an Oreo cookie. Mm-hmm. I've had this fantasy of being with two black men that were not like on pornography where the girl is like being objectified and used, but that they were just totally into me, like almost to a point of worship. And I knew one particular um, black guy that I had uh, some dinner with, and we started talking, and he learned about me, what you guys are just learning about me. He was blown away, of course, because looking at me, he would have never thought. And so we had this exchange. And so one of his fantasies was uh, he really wanted to be pegged by a woman, a strong, dominant woman. And I said, well, tell you what, I'll do that for you if you think you could do this for me. And he's like... (laughs) I gotcha. <laughs> so, I love this negotiation. <laughs> so we did just that. We set up a date and I went down to his place and we had a wonderful scene. It was beautiful. It was uh, incredible for me to be able to provide that uh, as well. He had a great time. And it was about two weeks later where uh, the... Um, favor was exchanged and it was absolutely delicious and and it just perfect. Like I couldn't have planned it better. You know, it was just really, really lovely. So I I happen to know there's slightly more to that story (laughs) than than what you just told us because there's, there's another layer (laughs) in there that has to do with you sort of being uh, chauffeured (laughs) to and from and you know, so it's important that the listeners understand, you know, like, how these <laughs> these different situations yes. um, really are opening you up to mm-hmm. a very much more expansive way of being and, mm-hmm. and being asked things of people that you were like, huh, you know, I never even would have thought of that, but I'm a yes to it. Mm-hmm. Yes, Kevin, thank you for reminding me. There, uh, there was a, there is a gentleman in my life who uh, would be considered either a cuckold or a stag. 
And if you don't know what that is, it is you. It is a man who really finds pleasure in um, the pleasure of his woman, finding lovers for her, setting up play dates for her, getting her all ready for her lover, cleaning her up after her lover, um, taking her to her lover, sitting out there waiting. Part of it is a humiliation aspect of it that they get off on. And um, so I know this gentleman who really likes this. And so when I knew that this date was happening, I reached out to him and said, would you be interested in stagging for me on this particular day? And of course he said, yes. <laughs> and uh, he says, well, I said, well, I have some demands. And I said, you know, you will pick up three long stemmed roses, some chocolate and some massage oil. You will pick me up at 1230. You will deliver me to this place by 130 and you'll pick me up at 330 and have me home by 430. Any questions? No. <laughs> he had no questions. Um, not only that, but he also asked um, that I would give gift him with a cup of my ambrosia. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically your pee. And he wanted that on ice. So he picked me up with all these wonderful things. He had a lovely cup of my pee and took me to uh, my date and did exactly. He went away until I was ready to be picked up. See, most likely... <laughs> The people who are listening, whatever kinky thing you think that you did over the weekend was not as kinky as that. <laughs> you know, what I'm loving though about this is everybody is in full consent. Everybody mm -hmm. is like, this is what feels good to me and I'm willing to participate into that. There's no one that's like doing something in, like a favor to somebody else like this is not really what they want it's like it is following your pleasure mm -hmm. and i think it's so important and to realize that following your pleasure and your bliss can open up to so much more than you thought could be possible and i truly believe that's that's what you had in mind with that year of saying yes um and i know that not everything on your list was sexual i know there was crystal mining i was i know there was a lot of other things there too mm -hmm. And I think that then the more you went into the year, the more things unfolded and maybe the bolder you became. I would definitely say boldness. And then the more that, the more that I learned that I could manifest just by saying yes, the more opportunities showed up, I would just think it and I would get a text message or, um, and an opportunity would present and yeah. I would be going, is there any reason why I shouldn't experience this? Yeah. No? Well, then it's a yes. <laughs> That's amazing. What a powerful woman. Mm. That is very true. She is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And I might add, she also has amazing scheduling skills. <laughs> because to coordinate everything that you just coordinated in that last story you told us, that was, that was truly skillful. <laughs> so I'm, I'm wondering, because I love these stories. They mm -hmm. are amazing. And, I, and I'm pretty sure that the listening audience is enjoying them as well. Before we move on to the next question, if maybe... Maybe you could just indulge us in one more story of some <laughs> awesome thing that you said yes to. Some awesome thing that I said yes to. Hmm. Well, okay, I'm going to tell you this one. I, this gentleman who is the cuckold that I explained uh, what his role was, um, the, about the second or third time we had met, he had invited me to come to a gangbang that he had um, organized for a couple of lovely ladies that he knows. And there would be a number of black men there. He has a thing with black men. <laughs> <laughs> and he wanted to know if I wanted to come and watch. And I sat with that and I was like, you know what? I've never seen that before. It's super edgy for me. The answer is yes. And so I went and on the way over there the whole time going, okay, I'm just going to voyeur. I'm just going to voyeur. I'm just going to watch. But by the time I pulled into the parking lot, <laughs> I knew that it might be more than just voyeuring because I worked <laughs> myself up. <laughs> Yes. And then by the time I got in there, and there was a full action stuff going in, it was at, at, a, at a motel, 
And um, I saw the gentleman who had invited me and I went to go beeline just for him to like go into my safety corner. And I looked over at one gentleman who was in his pleasure at that time and he locked eyes on me. And I knew that I had to make a decision whether I was going to be a yes or a no within about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I chose yes. And I... I would have to say I, you know, they say that uh, a gangbang is like four or five cocks in one night. I did not have four or five cocks in one night, but I was definitely in the energy of it and uh, did have the, you know, the pleasure of a couple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. That's a great story. <laughs> wow, it's getting pretty hot. It is getting warm in here. <laughs> <laughs> the studio is on fire. <laughs> We're going to have to turn up the AC. <laughs> so... I'm curious if uh, along the way within this year, if there was any struggles or difficulties that show up, that showed up for you. Mm. Just in, in the, the kink aspect of, of that or the sex aspect of that or in, in just... all the whole year of saying yes, in all its many forms, really, mm. you know, um, I would have to say, um, Sometimes doing some of those things by myself, wanting to be able to share those experiences with other people sometimes was a little challenging. Um, Being also someone that goes after what she wants, there was a little bit of an internal struggle about feeling like I should be waiting, like waiting to be asked, waiting to be pursued, waiting to be, um, be the one invited. Um, I, I, And I had struggled with a little bit about, you know, the, a little bit of self-talk around, am I too sexual? Is this too slutty? Mm. Um, or am I going to be desirable if I continue to behave this way? Uh, so those are a couple of the things that, you know, and I sit with and I, and I, I know better. It's just mm-hmm. the conversation, but uh, I know where my heart come from is. And like you said, it's all in consent and we're all grown adults and um, no one's getting hurt. It's amazing how deep the programming goes, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because that's the programming that we all grew up with, that those things are bad, that we shouldn't do those things, that that's somehow some sort of bad behavior, Mm -hmm. right? And then the reality is as long as we're all consenting adults and we all agree to it and nobody's getting hurt in any way, then no harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. But it can really be a mind fuck. Yeah. And so I, I love that you brought that up because... There's probably, again, people listening who are thinking, oh, my God, if I did what she did, oh, the, ah, and the, mm-hmm. uh, and the, right? So <clears throat> it's really, it's really cool to hear you talk about that. Yeah, these things came up for you, and that's real. And you really checked in with it and decided, no, like, I'm in my power here. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing things in, a, in an upfront way where everybody has consent, and I'm all good with mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Is there something in particular that you did to get over this mind chatter? Because I see that in my practice, I have a lot of clients that, that carry shame and guilt around sexual behaviors that they have. And it's always a challenge for people to like, I, I kind of want to say, like, get over it, like, mm-hmm. stop it. And at the same time, like, is there something that you found was useful for you in order to not give in to those thoughts, really? A lot of it has to do with self-love, Celine, Mm. um, really affirming myself. Like I love that part of myself. I love Mm. that I'm so expressive. I'm love that I have, I love that I have the courage to ask. I love that, you know, I have the energy that calls in decent people. I mean, there's some assholes out there and there are times Mm -hmm. where, you know, I could be hurt. Mm -hmm. Uh, so gratitude that, um, you know, the people that are showing up in my life are really good, genuine people and don't mean harm also. Mm-hmm. So really just, um, you know, owning that facet of me, just like everything else, you mm-hmm. know, I'm this and I'm that, and I love that. And I love that. And I love that. And it's like, really, I love this part of me too. I love how I feel. And I love how I get to show up in my world when I've been truly expressed in a, an environment sexually and I can go to work and feel like I'm on my game, I can be in relationship platonically and be in my game. I can go exercise and, and just like have all the energy that, you know, that people are having off of coffee drinks and, uh, 
<laughs> I'm just high. I'm aroused. I am in a, this state of arousal and because I've been saying yes to these things. Wow. Talk about constant state of arousal uh-huh. there. We need to add that to our list. <laughs> I, I, I do believe you are inspiring a lot of people listening right now. <laughs> They're all going, I want what she's having. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> amazing stuff that you shared. And I'm wondering if you could tell the listeners from this whole experiment so far, um, what's the most valuable thing that you've learned? If you could distill it down. That I can have whatever I want, that I can create whatever I want, that there is a way, there's always a way to have what we want. Wow. That's powerful. That is powerful. And you know what I love about that is, you know, Celine, with you and I, you know, part of our mission is creating this worldwide movement of true sexual empowerment. Mm -hmm. And sexual empowerment means being able to take responsibility for Mm -hmm. your own needs, your own desires, your own wants to create the situations that you want. Mm -hmm. And so I love that because this just fits in with that so perfectly. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say too that because I do know you and I've seen the transformation over like we're nearly at the end of this year. And I, I could feel a difference in energy in your level of happiness, in your ability to express yourself, even in everyday matters, you know, in your confidence and even in the energy that you brought up, like you really light people on like turn them on just because that's who you are and that's the energy that shows up which speaks volume so much more than words and so I definitely can vouch for that transformation for having been witnessing it so Hmm, well thank you thank you (laughs) (laughs) I can feel it but it's definitely nice to be affirmed in it so Mm -hmm. thank you okay so we have one last question before our episode is over And I'm wondering if you could give our audience one piece of advice that you've learned from this, like the most important thing that you could tell them, anybody that's listening out there right now, what would it be? To have the courage to ask, to just ask someone, ask a friend, ask a blog, ask Google. (laughs) <laughs> you know, ask um, for what, just ask for what you want and mm-hmm. you'll find it. You'll find it. if you're really clear and you're intentional and you really want it bad enough, you'll find it. Oh, I like that one. It's like the burning desire. Mm-hmm. And so what do you do if uh, you ask and you have a no? Ask someone else. Yeah. <laughs> Think of it like when you were three years old and you wanted to play with somebody and you were like, want to play? And they're like, no. And you're just like, okay, fine. Turn to somebody else. Want to play? Yes. Cool. Mm-hmm. Exactly. 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 When, when you're three, it makes no difference if anybody says no. It's only when you grow up, up. so to speak, that you suddenly care when people say no. If somebody mm-hmm. says no, move along. Mm-hmm. You know, they always say, uh, you know, in business, like with entrepreneurs, um, to never accept the first three no's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So somebody says no, you ask again. Somebody says no, you ask again. Somebody says no, you ask again. And then generally they'll say yes. Now, I'm not necessarily suggesting in this case that you keep pressuring the same person to do this <laughs> no, that's thing not that you're that asking means. for. <laughs> but what I am saying is if, if one person says no and that's not their thing and they're not mm-hmm. into that kink, then they just ask somebody else. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, I want to thank you, Desiree, for being here today. It was a wonderful show. So inspiring. (laughs) Yeah, and it's still a little warm in the studio. (laughs) Well, thank you both for having me. (laughs) All right, everybody, that is it for our show, and we will talk to you next time. We hope you liked this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoyed this show, leave a comment and share it with your friends. And if you want more, we have an entire digital library with the best sex tips and relationship advice at CelineRemy.com. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y.com. So join us in the sex vault to continue this adventure. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing.